What is up, everyone? Thank you for joining us on this Friday night for this teen devotional for the Youth and Family Ministry in Philadelphia. If you're not a part of the Youth and Family Ministry here in Philadelphia and you're joining us, uh, we just want to say welcome and we're certainly glad to have you tonight. Uh, we're excited tonight to have Evan Bradshaw. Evan is a disciple uh, at the University of Kentucky and actually grew up in the Northern Virginia Church of Christ, a sister church of the uh, church here in Philadelphia. Evan, uh, I got to know uh, through our camps and our conferences that we that we put on throughout the year, and uh, <clears throat> he's just someone who uh, I thought would be a great opportunity for us to hear from tonight. And so he's going to be sharing some thoughts uh, from the book of 1 Corinthians at the very beginning, actually the first chapter. So I look forward to you giving your heart, your mind, and actually uh, Evan's going to be joining us uh, on each of our Zoom calls tonight uh, after the devotional, so you also get a chance to uh, fellowship with him and ask him some questions, and he's going to give us some discussion questions at the end of his message. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from Evan tonight. I think you're really going to enjoy it and get a lot out of it. Next Friday, I'm additionally excited about something that we've got and we've been working on for a few weeks now, and that's an all-ACR teen devotional. So teens from Virginia, uh, Maryland, Delaware, and Pennsylvania will all be gathering together to uh, worship God, to uh, hear a message, and hear from seniors from around the ACR about how the coronavirus and, and life right now is affecting them and even uh, some of the things that they're missing out and some of the challenges that they're facing. So I would hope that you're really looking forward to that. We will additionally have Zoom uh, discussion calls after that devotional next Friday. Those will be a little bit later than normal because that devotional will be at 7.30. A few weeks after that, we're going to have our second ever international teen devotional. So I'm really looking forward to us continuing to connect from teens from around the world to hear from them, to be inspired by them, but also to connect with them with some of the challenges that, that our, our brothers and sisters around the world are facing in a very, very intense way. And I, I look forward to all that you're going to get from tonight. I'm just so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that we can do this together, that we can be uh, winning teams from all over the greater Philadelphia area together. And God is doing uh, amazing things. I'm so grateful for all of the... We've got four Bible talks that are focused on teens right now here in the Philadelphia area, and I'm so proud uh, of the men and women who are stepping up to reach out and to connect, and I pray that you are inspired to do more, to connect with more uh, about what God is doing here in the greater Philadelphia area in the youth and family ministry. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to say a prayer for our night, and then I'm going to toss it over to Evan to lead us uh, in the word tonight. So let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your incredible mercy and your love, your kindness and the gifts that you provide us through your love and your mercy and just the desire that you have to bless us. And we know that, that God, right now, so many are challenged. Uh, challenged. They're, they're, they're suffering. Uh, they are lost. God, I just pray right now that, uh, first of all and foremost, God, that we give our hearts and our minds to you tonight, that we connect with you, uh, what you are trying to tell us, how you are trying to inspire us, how you are kind of trying to guide us and direct us. God, I pray that we give our hearts to you tonight. God, I pray that our connection with Evan is one that's encouraging and that uh, what's on his heart, God, that's, it certainly helps us uh, as well. God, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this point, I give you Evan Bradshaw. Take it away, bro. What is up, guys? Good evening. My name is Evan, and I'm truly encouraged to be able to to preach the good news for your guys' devotional lesson tonight. Uh, but my prayers sincerely go out to all of you guys in the city of brotherly love, all the way from here in the bluegrass city of Lexington, Kentucky. And I hope you guys are, are really staying safe, uh, staying healthy during this, this crazy time of COVID-19. But uh, even more so, my, my hope is, is that you guys are really standing firm in your faith in God amid... Uh, yeah, this crazy world that we're living in right now, especially um, because guys, God is still present. Okay, God is still powerfully working uh, in everything. Amen. And I hope that we can see that tonight uh, through God's word and through God's scriptures. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and start turning in your Bibles to the book of First Corinthians. Amen. We'll be kicking off uh, and the book of 1 Corinthians, and none other than the beginning, chapter 1, that will be our main text for tonight. And we'll be doing a ton of flipping tonight as well. Why? Because, man, the book, the first chapter of 1 Corinthians is just chock full 
of great, great stuff that we can learn from. And my hope and my prayers as we read uh, chapter one together and as we dissect it, if you will, um, what Paul has to say to the Corinthians in just, yeah, this first chapter, we begin to understand the integral and glorious and yet yeah, powerful uh, role that the cross, the cross of Christ, plays in our own personal daily lives. And so uh, with that, if some of you guys uh, want a title for this lesson, then you can make it the glory of the cross, the glory of the cross. And so let's let's dive in. Reading, uh, picking up at verse one, it says, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours, grace and peace to you from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him, you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. God who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thoughts. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul, another, I follow Apollos, another, I follow Cephas or Peter, still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius, so no one can say that you were baptized in my name. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. So guys, my, we'll stop there. My one and only point for you guys, we're going to keep it simple, just one point. And it's in the form of a question. And it is human wisdom or the power of God. Human wisdom or the power of God. And I believe this, this concept, this idea is just draped, uh, littered all over this chapter. But let's backtrack. Let's do a little backtracking a little, because uh, we got to get some context since this is the beginning of the of the letter. And so we know from Acts chapter 18, right, that Paul, the apostle of God, the the author of this letter, was the one that planted actually this church in the city of Corinth. And the city was a very prominent and popular city of the ancient world. Uh, at this time, you know, heavily populated, uh, booming with business and, and sporting events, actually, uh, much like Philly, right? But, however, it was also known for some not so good things. It was also known for its reckless pursuits in, in any and all types of pleasures. So, essentially, it really wasn't known uh, for its religious devotion. To, to the one true God. And so Paul, knowing this, strategically, he rolls through, right? And he preaches the good news of Jesus and the cross. And praise God, many men and women along the way, along, along that time, become saved. They begin to be saved. And, and over time, the church is formed and established. And Paul ends up staying there for a year and a half, is, is what it said to believe in, and that's a lot longer than average of, of Paul's stays in different cities as he, as he, on his missionary journey, preaching the word. Um, he stays for a year and a half. And so, you know, after he leaves, sometime after his departure from, from Corinth, he receives word, he receives a report that, 
you know, the church in Corinth, unfortunately, is now undergoing some serious, serious issues. Um, they're not unified. They're, they're disjointed. There's, there's disturbances that are arising within the body of believers there. And this concerns Paul. He, you know, he especially feels an even greater bond towards this family of, of, of believers because of how much he was with them. And so his response is this letter. And he writes them this letter in response to these issues he's been hearing. But what is cool, as we see in verses 4 through 9, is that while Paul will spend most of this letter, this entire book, uh, calling out the sin uh, of this church, um, he s- still starts off by sincerely praising God for the work that God has done and is doing with, with the people in Corinth, but specifically with the church family here. And I think it's important to notice the contrast between this city, right? Something, you know, prosperous, but but essentially bad because of its exploits and sin. That's what it's known for. But then at the heart is the church of Corinth, you know, the church of God, which is something good. And so he's saying because of God's grace bestowed on them by Jesus Christ, it says they've been enriched in every way. You know, they're not lacking in any spiritual gift. You know, all the good and, and, and the positive that has come from the to the Corinthian believers has come by way of the grace of God. You know, it's nothing that they have earned, right? It's nothing that they have done. But it's all come of these new gifts, this new way of thinking, this knowledge of Jesus because of the love of God, because of the grace that God has bestowed on them. And so we kind of have to put it in our shoes. Uh, for you guys, for your church, do you, do you guys, I ask, in your teen ministry, in your own personal walks with God, see the good amongst the bad? Is that is that is that something that is often how you think? Is is especially now, right, with just all the the craziness around us, just the seemingly bad things after bad things, surrounded by a bad environment, maybe. Are we able to see the good that God is doing, the blessings that God is bestowing amidst all this? You know, all the positive, despite the hardships, despite the flaws, despite the sins that we may be undergoing or, or that our church family may be even partaking in. Are we able to, to still praise God, still give thanks at the many blessings that we have, are we content with with where things are at, knowing what God is doing? You know, I had a, a customer uh, just the other day at work. I work at Whole Foods. <laughs> Shout out to Whole Foods Market. Um, but I work in, in customer service, and I and I ask the customers how they're doing. You know, how they're doing today, and you know, and usually, especially now, it's you know, a lot of generic responses, but a lot of negative ones sometimes. Like, well, not so great because of everything going on. But this one guy caught me off guard. He says, you know, I can't be stressed when I'm blessed. <laughs> and I was like, you know, at first I was like, I admit, I was like, kind of going through the motions. Uh, I was kind of like, yeah, I guess so. But then, uh, but then I, I thought about him more. I was like, no, he's right. He like, what a great mindset to have. Uh, but, and I don't even know if this guy is, you know, a God-fearing man, a believer in God, but he, he's, he's content with uh, where things are at. He doesn't have to stress because he, he sees the blessings around him. And, and, and that's totally, totally how we should think as, as Christians, right? Like, no matter the bad that's going on in the world, God is still working. And he's still blessing us because of his grace, because of the cross. And in verse 9, it says, God is faithful, right? The God who has called you into the fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Guys, it starts and ends with Jesus. Jesus is at the center of it all. But this is what the church in Corinth was losing sight of. And it, this is what they were beginning to, to start to forget, is Jesus. Okay, And it was causing divisions among the members. In verses 10, 
uh, through 17, you, you see the, the disciples start to form groups, like little little fan clubs, if you will, around these these different teachers that have have come through uh, the city, of, through the church since Paul has has left. And, and you know, some are saying, well, I, I still follow Paul. You know, I, I liked what he, he brought to it. It's sad that he's gone. Or someone like, no, I follow Paulus. You know, he's he's really cool. He's really, really noble. And someone like, I follow Peter. You know, he's like, he's, uh, he, was, he received the, the keys to the kingdom by, by Jesus himself. You know, I follow this guy. And, and, and uh, Paul still says, you know, still another, I follow Christ. Paul's like, Paul's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, no. Like, follow Jesus, you know. Don't follow, follow these men, but follow them as they follow Christ. Why are we forming divisions? You know, follow Jesus, the one you are disciples of, disciples of Christ. You who were baptized in the name of, you know, the one who died for you. Did, did, he, he goes on to say, did I die for you? Did, did, did Peter, did Paul, did Apollos? He's like, no, Jesus. You, you guys are following Jesus, right? Why, why are we creating these factions amongst the church body? Uh, and, you know, leaders, guys, and, and teachers and, and, and everyone are, are all just servants of Jesus. We've got to remember that. Uh, no matter the, the role, we all have an integral role because we all are servants of Jesus. No matter if you're a teacher or a leader, you know, and Paul responds to this disunity, how? With the gospel, with the good news about Jesus, like he always has been since the very beginning that, that's, that converted people in the first place, that, that changed minds, that, that offered repentance. It's the good news, the gospel. Paul responded with the same message. And so I ask you guys, how do you guys respond to disunity amongst the disciples of your ministry, uh, among your church even? How do you guys respond? Is it like Paul? And you got to ask yourselves, if it's not, well then who do you guys follow? Who are you guys striving to imitate and live like right now? Currently, you know, is it the most popular TikTok stars? All right. I know TikTok's huge. I'm actually not in that, that scope of, of social media right now, but I, but I see it. It's prevalent. <laughs> TikTok is all the rage. Are you following TikTok stars? Are you, are you striving to be like them and imitate them? Seriously. Or is it Joel Embiid, right? <laughs> the basketball star for the sports fans. LeBron, maybe. But are you following them? Are you following your friends? Are you trying to imitate them? Are you trying to follow and please your parents? You know, good things. But are you striving to imitate them? Or are you striving to imitate Jesus? That's what I'm trying to get you guys to see through Paul's response to the church in Corinth. You know, the church, guys, should be a Jesus-centered community and not about siding by and following the man or woman that is the most popular or the most eloquent or the most wise, you know, quote unquote, as we'll see in a minute, talking about human wisdom, remember? Because if we do, then Paul says we are deliberately emptying the power of Christ, as it says in verse 17. Lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. We can do that if we have this perspective, if we start to forget about the message of the cross. Because of the cross, we are unified in Christ. Okay, all of us through different states, right? I'm here from Kentucky, your brother in Christ, through different nations. It's because of the cross we can be unified. Paul has urged the Corinthians to remain united in heart because of their common salvation. The cross of Christ is what should keep all true disciples, all true Christians connected. And if that means virtually, then amen. We will do virtually. We will get on the phone. We will get on Zoom. We will watch these videos on YouTube, however you're watching this. We will do what we have to do to stay connected because of our common sharing in the salvation of Christ. In other words, we make ourselves holy and set apart from the world and their actions and their thoughts. All right? And I say that because we will continue on in verse 18 to the end of chapter 1. 
Read with me, guys. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligence I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of all the world? For since in the wisdom of God through the world, for since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Guys, if there's one thing you guys take away and remember from this virtual lesson please let it be this, is that through the lens of the world, through the glasses that they see through, through their perspective, the cross is simply just foolish, okay? But to those who see Jesus, who see things through the lens of Christ, it is the power of God, like it says in verse 18. You know, to those who reject the salvation of the cross, the concept of, of being saved through the work of a crucified man would seem foolish. You know, it would, would seem strange. You know, what, what message does a, does a cruel and humiliating instrument of death, capital punishment, have? Right? What, what powerful message does that have? What encouraging message does that have nonetheless? Like we might think of in the 21st century, the message of an electric chair. Or, or the message of a lethal injection, right? Like, that's unusual. But to those who trust in God, the Bible says, to those who trust in it and are being saved, it is the power of God, okay? The gospel, the gospel message, the good news about Christ, equals the message of the cross. We have to, to wrap our heads around that. It, it reverses our worldly values, when we seek and allow ourselves to understand this, this message of the cross. It's not, it is not true wisdom that is rejected, as it says in verse 20. Where's the wise person? Where's the teacher of the law? Where's the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? The wisdom of the world, right? It's not true wisdom that, that we're rejecting. God's not saying, you know, don't, don't aim to be wise. But he's saying, but, the, but the, the false wisdom of the world, that is what I reject. You know, and I, I know I can even fall victim, guys. To, I can fall victim to the false wisdom of the world sometimes. Uh, you know, especially when I'm at work sometimes, some days, you know. Uh, I can be surrounded by all the noise. Like, uh, there's just no hope for humanity. You know, that's what I hear. And, and I can feel the frustration of, of the people around me. And I can... That can be casted onto me and I can get frustrated. And the sadness stemmed from, from some of our world leaders and their decisions, you know. And you know, people look to politics for, for the answer or, or, or they try to find comfort and joy in pleasures, you know, different pleasures like entertainment or whatnot. And, you know, just trial after trial comes, uh, COVID case after COVID case, right? Death after death. Uh, people rejecting uh, the word and Bible studies, whatever you have it. And I can look around and be like, God, what are you doing? What are you doing here? You know, what, what does this all mean? You know, I can, I can fall victim myself of, of, of rejecting the power of the cross sometimes. And, and 
the wisdom of God. You know, in verse 22, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, right? Even the Jews and Greeks alike rejected the cross, you know. Um, generally speaking, you know, many, many of the Jews and Greeks embraced the message of the cross. But, but you know, Jews in terms of, of theists, right? Like, they took great pride in, in, in these miracles and signs that God show me something. Like, I won't, I can't trust in you if you don't show me this miracle. If this disease doesn't get, you know. Uh, crushed in a day, right? And you have the Greeks, aka the atheists, maybe the polytheists, maybe um, they put their confidence in and in, in education and culture to obtain the answers, you know. But but God, guys, cannot be found through human wisdom, is what I'm getting trying to get across, okay? But only through the message of the cross. While human wisdom may produce some earthly contentment, don't get me wrong. It will never supply the true knowledge of God. You know, Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, right? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. You know, so get used to that. Now, this is not a call to abandon your education, right? I know some of you guys, are, school is finishing up. It's crazy. A lot of you are taking online classes. I don't even know I know my sister, her online classes have just been shutting down, so uh, I don't know how it is for you, but I know schools are wrapping up. This isn't a call to abandon your education, your, your pursuits of, of knowledge in that way, but simply a point that on their own, guys, spiritual wisdom is not obtained. Human wisdom simply cannot fathom the love of Christ for each and every single one of us. And so, in conclusion, guys, Verse 30, I'll read it. It says, It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Guys, Christ is all we need. Okay, in him we are wise, even if we have never finished high school. Okay, in him we are upright. We are righteous, even if we weren't brought upright. Okay. In him we are set aside for greatness, even if there are no great persons in our lineage and our ancestry. And in him, guys, we are valuable. Okay? We are valuable, worth redeeming, even if you're a broke high school student or college student. You know? We are valuable because of Christ, because of the cross and its power. Life is challenging, especially now. Okay, you could be surrounded by a tough environment like a like a church in Corinth was. You could have sick family members. You could have friends and family that are that are currently rejecting Christ, that are currently seeing this as foolishness. You could be doubting God yourself. But again, my hope and my prayer, guys, is that we allow ourselves to see the power of God through the cross of Christ that we may stand firm in our unity as God's family and trust in him in the complexities of life as we see the message of the cross. Amen. And so that's what I have you guys in, in, in this dissection of chapter one. And, and we're going to break up into D groups here in a bit. Uh, but I have two discussion questions that I want you guys to write down uh, and remember for these discussion groups. Uh, the first is how have you personally been at being unified with one another and with other disciples? How have you personally been at being unified with one another, with other disciples? Two, what can you do to make this power of God, glory of the cross, known to the world in your guys' own life? What can you guys do personally to make this power of God, this glory of the cross, known to the world in your guys' own life? Those are the two questions. Guys, thank you for letting me uh, share my thoughts and, and preach the good news for you guys tonight. Excited to talk with you guys in D groups uh, a little bit later. So to God be the glory, guys. Thanks.